Inequality of Thatcher years is the Guardian's headline as a think tank suggests the impact of inflation, welfare cuts and pay squeezes will hit the poor hardest. The Metro says rail operators have announced a big shake-up in train fares, which they claim will see passengers always being offered the cheapest available price. The same story leads The Times, which also features claims that thousands of newly qualified doctors are unprepared to do basic tasks. And according to the Mail, health tourism is costing the NHS hundreds of millions of pounds a year because of what MPs say is chaotic billing. Right, let's get down to it. Telegraph, asthma. Uh, yes. What we have here is... Trump uh, euro. He's, yeah. he's attacking um, Germany over the euro now. Um, he's trained his guns onto the continent of Europe. Yes, well, I mean, some people would say this is unprecedented because um, Donald Trump is um, very aggressively going for, um, you know, he's going for Brussels, now he's going for Berlin. And other, of course, on the other side, people would say, well, this, he's doing what he said that he would do. He's looking out for American interests. What he's accusing Germany of doing here is of, of profiting from a, from a weak euro. Um, and of course, the, the flip side of that is that you know that the dollar is is underperforming um, mm. hugely because of this. And and you know Donald Trump has to put his money or his dollar where his <laughs> mouth is, lit yeah. quite literally. So you can see this both ways: very aggressive, unprecedented, never seen before policy of 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 calling out people that uh, are, until now have not been. Or on yeah. the other side, you can see that this is Donald Trump um, calling out people for um, manipulating currencies which I think is what he's okay. potentially that's saying, the, yeah. uh, to the detriment of, of the American economy. Exactly. Matt, that's the key point, isn't it? Is it manipulation or is Germany simply taking advantage of a weak euro that is a result of a whole host of other things going on in the European Union? Is there manipulation here? Well, you know, you have to wonder because it's not just Germany, according to President Trump. It's Japan. It's China. I mean, he's going around the world picking fights very, very rapidly. Mm. And I... And, there's a sense of potential retaliation here because let's not forget that yesterday Chancellor Merkel sort of told him off over, he sort of reminded him what the refugee convention is. Mm. Um, and so um, there is a sense within the first few days of this administration of kind of tit for tat. And so the question of whether there's manipulation or not is being lost in what is kind of Trump against the world at this point. Uh, but this will be hugely, hugely popular with his supporters. I know I'm stating the obvious yeah. here, but we have to keep remembering that, don't, don't we? To 50% perhaps of the, of the electorate or, or the world, world population, this is um, aggressive tit for tat. But to the other 50%, mm. he's, he's doing what he said he would do. He did say, though, didn't he, in that interview with um, Michael Gove, he um, suggested that you don't see many Chevys on the streets of Berlin. No. He's got no. a point, hasn't he? And, well, they're, they're, I think the uh, I mean, who Germans wants to buy a Chevy? German's <laughs> response was make better cars. Yes, that was um, the response, yeah. yeah. Which is fair enough, I suppose. <laughs> uh, that was just um, a little addition there. Um, the Guardian <laughs> Trump travel ban. I mean, continuing, Matt, with, uh, with President Trump and his first few days in office. Opposition to Trump's travel ban grows. We know what Amber Rudd thinks of it. Yeah, and she's, she's against it. But, and also now we have one of the most powerful, richest tech barons in the United States, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, who's, who's you know, put his weight behind it. For a while, the tech companies were on the fence. I mean, mm. traditionally, they were firmly supportive of the Democratic Party. And when Trump was elected, they went to Trump Tower and they met with him. And they, they realized that, especially companies like Google that have contributed the individuals greatly to, to Democratic candidates, that they had to make friends or try and make friends with the new administration. That's lasted about five seconds. And, and what happened was with this ban, huge numbers of people, and in Silicon Valley, there's basically no one that doesn't have a relative or a family member or a spouse or a colleague yeah. or themselves that came from yeah. another country. So yeah. it's, a fun, it's almost an existential threat to this key part of the American economy. And Jeff Bezos and others, uh, Microsoft, uh, are fighting back. But isn't this just, you know, the sort of liberal left again, asthma as far as uh, Trump supporters are concerned, sort of getting all hot and bothered about something that's not very important? As far as his mm. hardcore supporters are concerned, this travel ban makes sense. Um, I'm sure it does, but I suppose what they have to consider is that you know th these are these are this is the new media. I mean, we're not talking about the car industry at this point. We're talking about um, new media tech companies, and um, if you are talking about affecting 
um, the, uh, the workforce of these companies. And that's something that you could argue might impact the American economy as mm. well. So, so perhaps you have to put that aside and look at the bigger picture. Yeah, Apple is the most profitable, biggest company yeah. in the United States. Yeah. And so, you know, would you necessarily want to start hurting that engine of growth? Hmm. But again, as I say, as long as the 40 percent who voted for Donald Trump support this policy and the poll suggests they, they do, then, you know, Jeff Bezos is just some rich guy who's sort of, you know, talking rubbish. Yeah. And in many respects, it really doesn't matter what the polls say at this point. He won the election. Mm -hmm. It was it was a democratically, you know, fair and square election, mm -hmm. even though he didn't win the popular vote. That's mm -hmm. the system. He's the president. He, he and Congress will dominate and, and make these decisions over the next four years or maybe eight. Mm. And hasn't he also made the point that this travel ban is for 90 days? I mean, this is not a permanent thing. So if Jeff Bezos is worried that he's not going to get, you know, some bright spark from India, from, I don't know, Somalia or whatever, if that was, uh, was ever going to happen, um, he seems to be sort of shouting about something that perhaps is not going to be a problem. Well, it's, longer the term. Sen it's the sense of uncertainty. It's yeah. like, OK, well, this 90 day thing, it may be a sort of shot across the bows of, of the liberal elite and, and the establishment. Um, but then what? And, yeah. and next, you know, we see it's Germany today. And then wait, what will it be tomorrow? I mean, mm. you, we, it's hard to keep up. Actually, I think, yeah. I think it's unlikely, isn't it? I mean, you're right to point out that it's a it's a temporary ban, if, I, if mm. I'm able to use that word. It's, it's 90. Not, he says it's not. <laughs> it's, uh... You're going to get a tweet tonight at <laughs> four in the morning. I can't wait. <laughs> That's an I can't How wait. dare you? <laughs> uh, he says it's 90 days, but I mean, he said that they had to implement it very quickly so that yeah. the bad dudes didn't, you know, rush in. So, so yeah. why why would after 90 days would he then lift it so that the bad dudes could cut, could could come back in anyway? Mm. I think you're right to raise. It, but I think it's unlikely that this is only going to be for 90 days. That's, that's my feeling anyway. Right. And it also does seem odd as well, Matt, that, you know, I mean, there hasn't been an attack on American soil by foreigners since 9-11. The restrictions on people from certain countries um, are pretty incredibly strict, actually, to get a visa and to get access yeah. to the United States. So they must be doing something right. So why upset mm. all that? Well, um, why we come back to the 40 percent and, and there are you know, stories today and a lot of reporters in the states are asked going to the heartland to Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, Pennsylvania, yeah. the key states that swung it for Trump and mm. asking them, you know, what do you think? And they're like, this is great. This is, for, uh, for once, someone we voted for is doing mm. what they said they would do. And they're doing it very quickly. Someone we voted for is pandering to our fears. That's not quite how they put it, but yeah, I mean, of course they are. This was, that's what was, that's what was to or addressing our fears. Well, so there's a difference, yeah, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, you could argue. Yeah, absolutely, that... absolutely. I, I'm not passing an opinion. <laughs> yeah. I'm simply chucking stuff not. out there, skimming stones <laughs> well, was... along the pond just to see which one falls. It was the nature of that campaign. It was a campaign, yeah. where, where it, whether you supported it or not, that was fundamentally about fear. Uh, yeah. This is a terrible situation that America's in. Everything's going wrong. Yeah. Obama was always all about hope, and, and people went along with that. Mm. Uh, this just resonated this time. Yeah. yeah. If you say there's a bogey man out there and then say you're the the person who can deal with the burger man, you're laughing, aren't you? <laughs> I suggest. Anyway, OK, Financial Times, Article 50. Now, on the front page there, if we bring that up, Financial Times is KC. The great survivor, Kenneth Clark. No, King Canute. <laughs> 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 that was quite clever. I just thought of that. I just thought of that. OK, well Ken done, Clark, the, probably one of the few Tories standing up in the Commons there saying why the uh, bill um, uh, giving the government the right to push Article 50, to uh, trigger Article 50, should not go through asthma. Um, but he was a lone voice, wasn't he? He was a, a lone voice. And I mean, you know, he, the, the thing about Ken Clark is... You know, he, he said the same thing pretty much for he, you know, he stuck to his beliefs for, yeah. for, for years and years. This is obviously going to put him at odds with, with his party, with Theresa May. I mean, we know people like Anna Subri, for example, mm -hmm. who, who doesn't, uh, who didn't uh, vote out, but who is, you know, going to she's vote. She's going to back it, yeah. Uh, she's going to back it. So uh, um, much to be admired, you could argue, with mm -hmm. Ken Clark. He is, he is going against the grain. And uh, just what, what an interesting picture it was yesterday, being applauded uh, by Labour and uh, S. SNP um, ministers uh, is a kind of the kind of thing that you never thought you would see, but the, the kind of thing that you you know we're not surprised at 
the, mm -hmm. the things we see in Parliament anymore. Mm. Yeah, uh, and Matt, um, the irony for all this, through all this, is that surely for the majority of my lifetime, the backdrop to Europe was squabbles within the Conservative Party. Yeah. At this incredibly inc important moment in British history, it's the squabbles in the Labour Party that are actually perhaps to the f more, more yeah. to the fore than the, than the situation across the benches. Absolutely. I mean, when you have one, you know, uh, Conservative MP very much at the end of his career with nothing to lose, to be <laughs> honest, he's a bit like John McCain in, in the United in the States, States yeah. who's got his six last years and he's going to say whatever he wants about mm. Donald Trump. Um, it's completely different in the Labour Party, which is completely fragmented over this. I mean, you mm. sort of think that the Labour Party couldn't find any more reasons to split and fragment, and Article 50 has kind of improbably done that. I mean, mm. they, but there were signs of it during the, the election campaign. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn's 7, 7.5, you know, out of 10 enthusiasm for yes. the European Union yeah. kind of foreshadowed what we're seeing now. Right. OK. Um, briefly, onto the Metro. Fair fares for rail passengers, Matt. Um, you know, you go and try, try and get a year average rail ticket. It'll, you've got to go through a menu that goes on for years. It's longer than the King James Bible. Um, but now they're finally going to slim things down a little bit for us. Well, they are. The, the, the story is that they're going to trial. This is not kind of across the board on certain lines, much simpler fares. But we were talking and laughing before, there are actually 16 million different types of rail fare. 16 million. Yeah. 16 million. So it is longer than King, the King James, King James Bible. Bible, I think. So <laughs> that was a consider joke. Considerably. <laughs> uh, they're going to slow it down. 15 million, yeah. aren't they? 15 million and yeah. it will be fine. It can't be so, 15. Seriously? 16 million. 16, one six yeah. million, apparently. Whoa, that's 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 false news. <laughs> that's fake news. That can't be true. That can't be. Okay, so what are they going to do then? How are they going to make this simpler? They're going to uh, cut out a lot of the sort of well, if you go here, then you have to buy an extra ticket, and if you go there, and so you'll right. be able to have more direct. A direct tickets. They're, they're going to tell you at the beginning, apparently, how yeah. how you can get the cheapest fare, as opposed to you being given a fare that's expensive and then having to split the journey and buy lots of single tickets and make it cheaper that way, which just, it seems ridiculous, but this whole story, anything to do with rail fares, as you know, is, is, is ridiculous. You have yeah. both sides blaming each other. Rail companies say, well, you know, we can't do that because the government's in charge of this and that and, that and all the rest of it. And uh, I, I would love to think that we would get the cheapest fare. It seems like the right thing, but I don't, don't hold your breath. No. Seems like the right thing, yeah. That's not going to happen, then, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the FT, back to the FT. We're all, we've all heard about automation, you know, sort of bank tellers being usurped by ATM machines and, you know, you check out on your own at, at supermarkets, you don't need someone to do it. Now we have an, a robot that can play poker and beat people, Matt. I know, I remember when I was a kid getting a first little video game, computer game. Well, for Christmas I want one of these. <laughs> it's a robot that has just beaten four of the world's top professional poker players and has won nearly 1.8 million. So, you know, the game is up for human beings yeah. around the poker table. Forget sorry your poker to face. Say. Yeah. I was, I was, I was going to say, you can have a pretty stern face if you're a robot, <laughs> can't you? Pretty stern. <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> All right. Good at bluffing. <laughs> very indeed, Matt Asma. Thanks very much for looking Thank at some you. of the stories behind the headlines. Many, many thanks for that. That's it from our guests tonight. And to you for watching, thank you and goodbye.